Uh, I was I was serious before. Um, it is a small event, so if you want to have more personal conversations and have much more detailed questions and answers with the speakers, I'm pretty confident they'll be here in the marketplace and also in the party later tonight. So uh, let's see. We had uh, extensions. We had clothing vertical. We had cheap sheds. Now we have shipping solutions. So Carl from uh, Tomando. Welcome, Carl. Thanks, my man. So good evening. Um, my name is Carl Hartman. Many of you will know Tomando, but um, today I'm going to talk a bit about my story, and I'm really going to probably focus on the entrepreneurship side uh, of the journey of a startup. So look, my, my humble beginnings, um, I worked in the very early days of JB Hi-Fi, and probably at the time I didn't know I was learning a hell of a lot. Um, so I worked there pre-IPO, uh, it was my university job, I looked after consumer electronics. Uh, the one thing, if you know anything about consumer ele electronics, is the margins are very thin. So back then, 15 years ago, um, you know, we were selling plasma TVs at uh, you know, $10,000, working on maybe a $75 rebate, uh, literally selling at cost price because we were told to win market share. Um, and put it this way, um, we had to predict the cost of shipping. And back then, this is before even dot-com one was started, um, you know, people would come into the store and go, oh, wow, how much to ship it? We'd look at a sheet on a wall, and be 50 bucks, and we charge that. Let's just say nine times out of 10, the law of averages didn't work our favor. Um, I then worked for, for News Corp uh, and Fairfax, largely looked after retail. I remember dot-com one, people going online, people spending 250 grand going all in on their first website, put a payment solution in there, and then they get to shipping. So they go, oh, what do we do? Free shipping. I can tell you some horror stories. Um, one of my first customers that went online sold couches. Um, his first sale came from none other than Thursday Island. Um, let's just say the cost of shipping was actually way more than the couch was even worth. And, uh, you know, I was telling people, put it on eBay, have it a go. You know, and I, I even had a crack at selling some things myself. I remember selling a, uh, you know, a stone Buddha. I was like, oh, I can do this. I'll do free shipping. My first sale, regional WA. And I'm like, I went from making $100 to losing 150 And I remember carrying this thing to the post office, and they were like, too, too heavy, because it was over 20 kilos. Um, and it was a bit of a, it was like carrying, it really hurt. Um, and I was like, well, margins are thin, customers want, and I remember back from my JB days, where you know, people would come in and want a TV, and they want it installed, and actually, can we get Saturday at, you know, um, at 8 in the AM, because we're, we're busy or working all week, or maybe after hours, and you can't leave a 50-inch plasma on someone's doorstep, because it will get stolen. Um, you know, may as well put a bullseye on the thing. But um, you know, naturally, there was all these challenges, looked around for solutions for my clients, couldn't find one, so went out and built it. Um, you know, these days, I'm, I'm proud to say, I mean, we've, we've um, got a little over 50,000 users of our, of our software. Uh, you know, I remember the early days when people were first started, we were getting, I'd get an email every time someone shipped something. Um, now we do something like 7 million transactions a day. Uh, if I had emails coming to me, I'm pretty sure I'd break email. It's like more print transactions than a European bank does. Um, it's, you know, it's quite scary. But you know, it's, it's been so fun to work alongside thinking about the re challenges of retail, um, you know, working alongside um, retailers. And every solution we built, we built in collaboration with the retailer. And you know, I think if you actually build a problem with an industry, you, know, you are building something that everyone you know, wants to use and has a lot of value. And I've always worked on the theory, if you solve a problem some, for someone somewhere in the world, somewhere else, there is someone wanting the same thing. And, and that's been very true to us. Um, look, I, I've also had the privilege of, um, you know, picking up a, a few awards, and I would say if you ever get the opportunity to go into some of these, um, these, these programs, you do get to meet some amazing people. Um, you know, I think as an entrepreneur, if you can ever get the opportunity to learn from other entrepreneurs, um, you know, one, it's social proof that you're doing the right thing. Uh, sometimes it helps put you on the right, um, on, you know, learn a few things, and, you know, you, can, you should never try to stop learning because there's always someone smarter than you somewhere. Um, and next, I'm just going to talk a few things I've learned, and, and hopefully they're, they're useful for you. And you know, I, I get people sort of knock on the door all the time and say, you know, you know how would you get going? How would you start? And the, the irony is, um, you know, what I tell them is sort of what I did. And um, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer as, as entrepreneurs, we have a responsibility to pay it forward because, look, Entrepreneurship is really hard. They don't tell you that you know, you're going to go start your own business. What they don't tell you is you're going to work a 100-hour week for minimum wage if you're paying yourself anything for the first few years, and you're probably going to work the next five years just to try to get 
paid what you were paid in the private sector beforehand. It's really hard. That's, the, that's not, not, definitely not in the subtext when you sign up to this. But one of the things, um, just before I, I left and went um, full-time with, um, you know, in, into growing to Mando, is I got the BRW out one day, and I just started going through the fast list, like calling everyone, you know, car sales, I select, and here's the thing, 50% roughly of the people I actually called, were, were, you know, gave me their time. And the approach I used was just like, you know what, I don't want money, I haven't even started trading, I don't think I have actually any value yet, I've got a minimum viable product, I just want to see how you started, how you got scale, how you raised money, and so many people uh, gave me time. Um, you know, I got a lot of, lot of knowledge from them, and um, I would definitely say, and I've said this publicly many times, if I didn't do that, I would have fucked up bad, right? I would have made so many bad, um, you know, just, um, decisions. But because I learned from people who had walked the path before, um, you know, it certainly helped a lot. The, um, the other thing was, um, you know, a few years later, I, I, I did uh, raise a million dollars uh, seed capital, sort of got that momentum, got the growth. I mean, we're doing triple digit growth. Um, I then raised five million um, from Elliston Capital. Uh, and, but what I had, if you know their model, they actually get a lot of the high net worth come in. And in fact, all these people that I had picked advice from ended up later investing. So the guys that started car sales and iSelect and some of the founders from What If. And, you know, I had sort of this privilege of learning from sort of generation one dot com Oz, um, and you know, there were so many lessons, good, bad, and that all paid forward. So then I started to think about it, you know, what is this underlying thing that helps make it successful? And I said, it really comes down to these two things, it's luck and skill. And I say this sometimes when people get all puzzled, they're like, what do you mean, luck and skill? And I said, luck is about being in the right place at the right time, and I'll tell you another story about that in a sec, but at the same time, you know, we, we can create our own luck, because if you put yourself in situations, I mean, you can, you know, get opportunities that may not have existed. Um, but at the same time, you can be presented with an opportunity, but skill is knowing what to do with it. And, you know, to give you a, a Magento uh, story, um, my first Imagine, which was actually Bob Schwartz, who was the president at the Times uh, last, um, you know, um, he gave this amazing keynote, and uh, he was talking about a charity, and I was like, I can make that work in Australia. Uh, you know, um, three years later, we're actually launching it after raising 2.2 million um, to get it started, called Good360. Um, basically, connects uh, retailers that are going to throw things in landfill with charities that need stuff. Um, but I remember, you know, I was feeling really inspired after he spoke, and I literally ragdolled him as he came off stage, and I said, love your speech. He's wearing an orange jacket, Tomando's orange as well. And I said, where'd you get your orange jacket from? And, uh, you know, opening rapport. And I said, by the way, this charity thing, I remember when I worked at uh, Dick Smith uh, in high school, you know, we used to throw stuff out all the time. You know, there is definitely something here for Australia. I can make this work. And, um, you know, it was a long journey, but finally made it work. Um, and he's... Over the, that period of time, getting that going, you know, we built a good relationship, and um, the, the, the same, that same sentence, I remember saying, you're really smart, I'd love you on my board one day. And, you know, funnily enough, three or four years later, now on my board. Um, and what I've learned from him, particularly from, the, you know, learning the whole Magento arc, um, you know, watching Magento grow to, you know, this more than 30% global market share, let's just say people like that can teach you a lot. <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've been really privileged to have learned a lot from Bob. Um, and, you know, our Magento story as well, I mean, I remember, um, you know, we kept getting inquiries, do you have a Magento extension? And, and you know, um, my co-founder, and uh, I'll say this with a bit of context, um, he's, he's not from tech, and uh, I was up in our Brisbane office one day, and uh, someone called to ask, you know, if we had a Magento extension. And someone, and he said, I don't know, he put, put his phone down and said, Carl, what colours do we support? And I said, what? He goes, someone's asking for Magenta. And I'm like, you mean Magento? And he's like, yeah, that's the one. And I'm just like, oh, God. Um, you know, naturally, we saw so much potential in it. We started really building heavily. You know, I think, you know, if our arc one was about trying to figure out, you know, what the cost of shipping was to try and make sure you didn't lose any money, you know, where we sort of evolved to is, like, how do we max what the customer wants, you know, from a customer delivery experience to what a shipping provider can actually do? Um, you know, so naturally, there's... there's uh, E-commerce is forever evolving, and um, you know you definitely have to put yourself out there and create your own opportunities. The um, and I, I've sort of covered this, but um, you know just seek people that are smarter than you, anyone you can learn from. Just go up at a, if you're networking, you know, over a beer. Just you know, ask, learn. Um, you know, if you can sort of learn from all these people, you know, naturally they can um, add a lot of value, and you'll be surprised on the percentage of people that will try and pay it forward. So, um, you know, certainly just put yourself out there, and that's what I mean about creating your own luck. 
Um, another thing which I sort of touched on already is capital is oxygen. And I remember reading this article the other day, and they talked about uh, you know giving entrepreneurs like truckloads of money is like pretty much giving them hundred dollar bills just laced with gasoline and chucking them a match uh, because often you get all this money you don't need to you don't know how to use it but. You know, I, I've thought about this over the years, and for me, I say capital is oxygen, because if you give someone too much capital, it will burn. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't have enough capital and, and you don't go out there to, to access it, uh, you know, you'll suffocate and die. Um, so the ability to raise capital, and you know, many of us that have grown to be um, to global businesses as global entrepreneurs, um, you know, I think we all sort of talk about some of the challenges of rules. And you know, it's good to see recently the government changing some stuff with stock rules. But you know, still the amount of venture capital in this, um, you know, in this country is, is, is minuscule compared to um, to Silicon Valley. And you know, certainly if you've ever had to do seed or A, I mean, you know, there's no one for our for our next round. Um, that could even write it the check that big enough for um, for us here because there's only you know about 25 to sort of you know, 30 million that really gets invested so so naturally you know you need to sort of build these networks and um, I certainly know all the entrepreneurs that I know just to pay it forward wherever they can because you know that's the only way this ecosystem sort of grows. Um, you know, naturally, if you are trying to raise money, one of the tricks that I've told many people and it does work is just set yourself goals, small goals. Like, if you want to raise a million dollars, break it into 100k or 50k parcels and do it at different discounts and stages. And you know, the one thing that investors want to see is that you deliver on a promise. So if you say, I'm going to do X revenue by Y, do it. And if you actually do it, they're going to trust you and they'll give you more. Um, you know, naturally, that revenue growth, uh, revenue growth is a currency in itself. I mean, if you can be hitting out triple digit growth numbers, um, you know, people will find you, your phone will ring because you'll start to show up on lists and you know, people will talk about you and you know, certainly that sort of helps. But you know, when you are type of, you're talking to an investor, it's all about getting your story right. Like if you can't explain what you do in a sentence, they're going to struggle. If you can't succinctly pitch in sort of five minutes or left, like you, they will lose. I mean, they get hit up all the time. So that, um, that process of refining, that's quite good. But ultimately, they care about two things. You know, what are the unit economics? How big is the market? And how the hell will they get a 10x return? And at the same time, you know, can, can you, you fill them with confidence that you'll, that you'll be able to pull that off? Because um, you know, naturally, people sort of invest in people. Um, but last but not least is just dream big. I mean, fortune favours the brave. Uh, you know, my analogy is if you shoot for the stars and you only get to the moon, at least you got halfway there. Uh, but, you know, those that never even plan to leave the Earth will never even, um, you know, will never even see it. So, you know, naturally, if, um, you know, if you can take your idea, think about it on the grandest scale, you know, set yourself goals to go out and get there, and just chip away at it. Um, but, you know, think about the end state, because often one of the, the mistakes people make is they, you know, they start, and a classic example, I've seen people that have, you know, started the business in Australia and hadn't thought about things like, you know, languages or other currencies, and, you know, all these things can come back and bite you. Um, you know, at a later time. So, you know, naturally, if you can think about these things up front, um, um, I think it pays forward a lot as you sort of execute. And I think, am I the last person before we get some drinks? So I yeah. should probably finish up. Time for questions. <laughs> Hold on. So, the long conversations later. Do we have any questions for Carl right now? Great. Thank you, Carl. Cheers, my man.